Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a Twitter bot that responds to tweets using Python. Okay, so I'm here in Visual Studio Code, and as you can see, I have a Python virtual environment named ENV. I have it activated, and I just have a Python file called bot.py. So the first thing that we need to do is install the one package we're using for this project. And that package is Tweepy. So Tweepy is a way to interact with the Twitter API and allows us and gives us a bunch of functionality to do a lot of different things such as liking tweets, commenting on them, retweeting, responding, following, actually tweeting, all of that kind of stuff. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is come to these docs here, copy this, and simply paste it in your terminal to install that. So first, let's import that. We'll say import Tweepy. And the next thing we need to do before we get any further with the code is to actually create our Twitter app. So if you go to developer.twitter.com, from the main page, you're going to have to register for a developer account. So you're going to simply just come up here and register. Now I'm already registered, so I can go to apps and I can get a list of the apps I have. So what you can do is you can create a new app and you can fill out all of this information here. So I already have an app, so I'm going to simply go into my app here and view all of the details. So over in the keys and tokens, this these are the API keys that we need to use. So the first thing that we need to do is create variables for these keys here and then set them in our project. Okay, so here we have our API key and our API secret key. So I'm just gonna go here and grab these and copy and paste them just like this. Now we also have the access token and the access token secret. So we need to generate these and we can copy these and do the same thing. And just like that, we now have our four keys. So we can go back here, close this, and we are good to go. So the first thing that we need to do is to use these keys to create a Twitter object that we can execute methods on to interact with the Twitter API. So I'm going to declare a variable called auth, and I'm going to set this equal to Tweepy.oauth handler, and I'm going to pass in our API key and our API secret key, just like this. Next, I'm going to say auth dot, and I'm going to use set access token. And now I'm going to pass in our access token and access token secret, just like this. And then finally, create a variable called API and set that equal to Tweepy dot API and pass in our auth object. Now we have this variable API that we can use to execute various methods and interact with Twitter. So now is a good time to mention what we will be building today. So basically what we're doing is I have this account here. And whenever I go to tweet, for an, exa for an example, I'm going to say at, and I'm going to at myself, I'm going to say hashtag 100 days of code. I'm going to say hello world. And a couple things to note with this tweet. So one, I'm adding myself. And two, I'm including the hashtag 100 days of code. So in this tutorial, we're going to create a bot that responds to any tweet that includes both of these. And you can make yours to be whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. So when I tweet this, of course, right now, nothing happens. No one's responding to it. 
but our bot will come in and respond to it just like this. So to do that, we are going to use a method from their API. So if you go to docs.tweepy.org, you can get all of the methods that they have available to us. And if I search for mentions right here, mentions timeline, that's the one we want to use. And as you see, it returns the 20 most recent mentions, including retweets. So like I said, this tweet here, this is mentioning myself. So when we call that method, we will get this tweet. And then from there, we can check if it has this hashtag. And then from there, we can respond to it using another method in this list that I'll show you in a second. So let's jump back into Visual Studio Code and take a look at the mentions timeline. So we can declare a variable called mentions, and that will be equal to API dot mentions timeline. And then what we can do is we can say for mention in mentions print, we could say print mention, but I want to print out the actual text. So now when I run this with python3 bot.py, there you go. So we see our one tweet just like that. And if I go here, and if I tweet again, but this time I just say hello world, and I hit tweet, there we go. Now if I come back here and run the bot again, I still only get this one tweet because remember I have to be mentioned in it and I did not mention myself in this second tweet here. So that's the first step, actually getting the tweet. Now we also have something called the ID of the tweet. So if I switch this with mention.id and I run this, we get this ID right here. And each tweet will have a unique ID associated with it. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the ID to keep track of if we have responded to the tweet already. Because we don't want to comment and respond to the same tweet more than once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file that will store this ID. We'll call this id.txt, just a simple text file. And before we go any further, let me make a couple of different tweets. Okay, so now I have four tweets, three of which have the criteria that we are looking for. And now if I go back here and I run this again, we should get three different IDs, and we do. So let's go back and take a look at this id.txt file. So basically what we can do is this mentions timeline method, if you go back here, it takes in a since ID. So we can pass in an ID to this method, and it will only give us the tweets that were tweeted after that tweet. So for example, if we give it this uh, ID here, if we pass that in, it will return back nothing because these were all tweeted, or these two tweets were tweeted after this one. What the text file is for is to store that ID. And then each time we run this code, we will retrieve the current ID from the text file, use it, and then grab the last ID and store that back in the text file. So let's implement that in code. I'm going to create a variable called file, and this will just be the name of our text file. We need one method called retrieve ID. And this does what you think it does. It retrieves the ID from this file. So we need to pass that in as a parameter, just like that. And then we need to first open that file. So we'll say f underscore read is equal to open, passing in our file. Then we will create a variable called id, uh, sorry, last scene id. 
and that will be equal to f underscore read dot read dot strip just like that and we need to convert this to an integer so we can cast it just like that and then for example let's just throw this id in there just so you can see kind of visual visualize it a little better so it will open the file it will grab the id in there and store it in this variable which in this case is this id and then we want to close the file so we'll say f underscore read dot close and then finally return the last scene id okay just like that so now we can call this this function simply like this and we can pass in our file just like that so this should retrieve the id and let's test that out by adding this print statement so we'll say print the last scene id and when we run this program it should print out the id and there we go so it prints out 128 blah 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 which is the id that we have in there okay perfect so let's undo that and then the next method we need is a store method so this will store the id after we finish executing so we can continuously update the id in this file so for that we'll say def store id and this needs the id as well as the file now we can say f underscore write that will be equal to open pass in the file and sorry up here we need to pass in read just like that and then down here we can pass in write perfect and then we can use this and we'll say dot write and we want to pass in the id right here but we want to cast that to a string because we're grabbing it and we're using it as an integer and then finally just like above we need to close the file and return just like that so now this should update the file so let's test that out let's comment this code out and we'll say store id we'll pass in one two three and we'll pass in our file now we'll run this and let's check there we go one two three now of course i'm going to replace that back because we don't actually want that okay so those are our two methods our retrieve id and store id and now what we can do is we can use those to clean up this down here so let's do that we'll say last scene id is equal to retrieve id pass in the file just like we did and now what we can do is we can keep this line here mentions equals api dot mentions timeline but instead of just this empty uh phrases here what we can do is we can pass in our last scene id and we can say tweet underscore mode is equal to extended and this was make sure to give us the entire tweet now we can loop through the tweets so we'll say for mention in and what we want to do we want to say reversed mentions just like this and this simply just reverses the order of these so we get them in the correct order and then we don't want to print the id what we want to do is first check if the tweet includes this hashtag and if it does we want to respond to it using another method called update status which again can be found in here right here update status so to first check for the hashtag we can simply do that 
by an if statement. So we'll say if, and we can just say 100 days of code in mention dot full underscore text. So if this string is in the tweet, then respond to it. So if it is, we're going to set last seen ID equal to mention dot ID. So update the ID, store that updated ID, just like that, and pass in the file as well. So update the last scene ID, store it, and now we want to respond to that tweet. So we can say API dot update status right here. And if I go back here, you'll notice it takes in a bunch of different stuff. All we want to do is pass in the message and the ID of the tweet. Those two are required. So first we will say at, whoops, at, we'll say mention dot user dot screen name. So this will just at the user. Oops, there we go. And then we're going to say plus and whatever message we want. So I'll say keep up the great work. And then comma mention dot ID. So it knows which tweet we are actually responding to. Now, just for our sake, I'll say print reply to at mention dot user dot screen underscore name. So it'll just print out in the terminal that responded to this user. And then that's all there is to it. So let's let's run this and see if it works. So our ID is this one here. So it should, because that ID corresponds with, I believe, this tweet, it should respond to all three of these tweets. And then it should update this ID with the ID of this last tweet. So let's go ahead and give that a run. Let me clear this out. Say python3 bot.py and we'll give it a run. Okay, there we go. So replied to this user, replied to this user again. So it looks like it only replied to two of them. Okay, and there we go. So we have one reply, two reply. So it didn't reply to this one. So I'm gonna guess that the ID we passed in was probably this one, but there we go. Keep up the great work. Spelled it wrong, but that's okay. And keep the great work. Now, if we go back to our ID.txt, the ID was updated. So if we run this again, we don't get anything. And if we go back here, we can see it did not reply again. So that's really all there is to it, guys. If you want to continuously keep this running, you could wrap it in a loop and have it execute every 10 or 15 or a minute or whatever you want. But for now, this is where I'm going to stop. And the next video, we'll continue on with this and explore some of the other things that the Twitter API and Tweepy can do for us. So we'll take a look at some of these methods here. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this.